it's kit assembly time again. On the bench I have the LED persistence of vision kit and it's composed of this instruction sheet, a case which looks very similar to uh, the ones you would uh, find with a doorbell and two bags of parts. So let's start the assembly. I'm going to start with this bag of parts. We have what looks like a coil which is uh, made of a very thin wire so you sh should be careful with this one. It, I believe it can be easily damaged. We have some resistors in here, some LEDs and the PCB. Let me just zoom in on the PCB. Now I just noticed this PCB has a V-slot routing along this axe and I also noticed these uh, routed holes with these pads each side of the uh, routed holes so I'm uh, assuming I would have to snap off these two pieces and they will uh, go vertical into these slots and be soldered in there. So first I'm going to try to snap this and hopefully I don't break anything. Okay, so I successfully got one of them. And the second one. So the microcontroller was stuck with the adhesive tape like this with pin 1 key in this corner. But I don't see any markings on the PCB that would indicate that's the correct orientation. So here is how we're going to find out how to mount the microcontroller on the PCB I mean the orientation of pin 1 right here we have the crystal oscillator and its two companion capacitors and if we consider this pin as pin 1 this is a 44 pin package which means 11 pins on each side so we would have pin 11 right here, pin 12 here, then 13, 14 and 15 and we know from the schematic that 14 and 15 are the uh, inputs from the crystal oscillator and pin 16 goes to uh, ground which is the same as this side of the uh, capacitors and we, if we measure continuity between this pin we have continuity so that must be pin 16 and those two 14 and 15 because they, they are the inputs of the crystal oscillator so it must be uh, pin 1 right here and that is actually the other way around when compared to the original orientation of the chip with the uh, adhesive tape so instead of going in like this the chip should be soldered like this things like this can be very misleading and you can end up with a kit that's not working or even worse uh, you can uh, damage the chip and there's not no go going back from uh, from that point so you need to be extremely careful with these kind of kits that don't come with the exact instructions as usual I'm going to be using a water soluble flux a pair of tweezers and the solder wire with water soluble uh, flux inside its uh, core. I'm going to start by applying some flux on the PCB. I'm going to try to position the chip on the PCB and align it as best as I can. Now that I have my chip aligned, I'm going to take just a little bit of solder on the tip of my soldering iron and I'm going to tap a couple of pins
and another three on this side and right now the chip is secured and it's not moving from its alignment now I can take care of the rest of the pins so my method usually involves putting some solder on the soldering iron tip and then just dragging along the pins towards the exterior of the chip and of course the flux that I added at the beginning really helps and uh, prevents solder bridges from happening okay so I have all the pins done now I'm going to switch to a macro lens and inspect the soldering as you can see the soldering looks to be just right good solid joints on all sides and I see no solder bridges at all next I'm going to continue by assembling the 10k resistors and it looks like we have four of them two which go here and here one that goes here and another one here the 10k resistors are marked 1023 and they are in uh, 0805 SMD package so first I'm going to carefully take them out of their cut tape making sure I don't get any of them on the floor next I'm going to apply some flux I'm going to put a little bit of solder on the tip and I'm going to tack just uh, one side of the resistor and then the other side Next I'm going to continue with the 100 nanofarad capacitors, I have three of them and they are marked 104. One of them goes right here next to the 10k resistor. I'm not sure where the third capacitor goes, it's not very clear from the instructions. I see one here, which I already soldered, another one here, but I, d but I don't see a third one. I'm going to continue with the 20 picofarad capacitors, which are marked with 20, and they go right next to the crystal oscillator. Next I'm going to solder in the crystal oscillator, it looks like it's an 11.0592 MHz and I accidentally plugged one of the holes with solder, so I'm gonna have to heat that up. Now make sure you don't insert your crystal oscillator all the way to the bottom of the PCB because you will short uh, using its metal case you will short the uh, capacitors so you just have to keep a little bit of clearance between the can of the oscillator and the capacitors underneath next up we have a couple of uh, diodes one is a small signal one it's a 1N4148 and you need to identify it it has a 4148 written very small on the side of it so it's this one in my case it seems I have made a, a mistake with the uh, 4148 diode it wasn't supposed to go in the cathode wasn't supposed to go in this hole right here but rather in this one 
So I'm going to unsolder that diode it and put in a new one. The 4148 diode, it's a kind of a jelly bean part, so I always keep them in my parts bin. I had a replacement to use on this kit, but you need to be careful when uh, assembling it if you don't have any spare parts because you'll probably have to wait for a while to get a replacement from your local shop. Looks like in here we have a 4 uh, pin header so I'm going to try to keep clear of that. The capacitor needs to go in like this with its uh, plus side connected to the cathode of the Zener diode. At this point I'm not sure if I should insert the capacitor more or maybe if I should leave its leads longer so that I can bend it 19 degrees. I will continue with the assembly because I'm not sure how uh, much height tolerance I have for the moment so I'm going to wait a little bit before shorting its uh, uh, leads length. So I have checked some pictures online regarding the uh, infrared receiver or transmitter LED and uh, it appears it needs to go in like this on uh, using these two holes and facing the bottom of the PCB and I wouldn't have uh, figured that out from the instructions alone I mean there are some drawings in here with uh, Chinese text but you can't possibly understand that. So hopefully this will work. Next up I'm going to assemble the LED sticks and only now I realize that I should have left them uh, attached to the main board uh, wh while soldering and breaking them off later because they're quite small and uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to solder them like this on their own. I'm going to start by soldering the resistors which should be 560 ohm As for the LEDs, they have a mark on their bottom side and uh, the pointy tip of the mark, which is on this side, represents the cathode of the LED. Mounting all of these LEDs will be quite difficult because I believe they're supposed to go like this on the side of the PCB with the cathode facing the resistor side. Making those solder joints on the side of the PCB will take a lot of time and will probably involve cursing. So I finally managed to solder all the LEDs on these uh, very thin strips. It was a pain to get them soldered on the edge of the PCB. Really bad design decision to make it this way. I think from the assembly point of view this is the worst uh, kit I've ever done. Now I will uh, prepare the main board with some flux and I will also thin the pads before attaching the LED strips. I will just thin a couple of pads
okay so this is one side done now I'm going to take care of the other side as well next I'm going to attach this uh, small plastic piece which is held in place by uh, a couple of self tappers next the small ferrite ring goes over this plastic piece the coil goes over that as well and it will get soldered on this point and on this point right here I will probably have to use some hot glue to keep the coil in place over the ferrite ring because this piece is going to be spinning and it might uh, move from its place now when assembling the base for the rotating kit it gets a little bit tricky so I'm going to first start by securing this piece on top of this smaller box I'm going to use this uh, sharp Phillips screwdriver just to mark the places where the screws will go in now it should be easier to insert them now I simply need to drill a hole right through the center of this uh, plastic ring so that the shaft from the motor will go through the hole and exit on this side now I'm going to use my soldering iron to level the remaining plastic now I'm going to try and secure the motor using some uh, hot glue now I'm going to try and position it so that it's right where it should be now I think I will let this uh, cool down and then I will add more hot glue as for the part of the circuit that will reside inside the enclosure which is uh, this left side on the schematic it's actually the side of the circuit which is controlling the motor and the uh, power transmission through the inductive coupling so for this part of the circuit I'm going to do the assembly freestanding in the air just like this because there is no uh, PCB provided and I'm only following the schematic and soldering the components together so here is what I have so far this is the uh, DC motor stuck in place with hot glue I also added some hot glue on the exterior of the coil just to give it some uh, rigidity and prevent it from uh, disassembling itself here is the base where I drilled uh, multiple holes these two 
will be used for uh, holding this smaller assembly. The center one is for passing the wires through. In here I will uh, have the 3mm LED infrared. In here I will uh, have the on-off switch and on the side I did make a slot for the uh, DC input uh, connector. I have finished all the required assembly for this kit so I'm going to attach the rotating part I'm gonna make sure it has clearance to spin without touching anything now I'm going to apply power through my uh, linear power supply 5 volts limited at 500 milliamps it looks like it's only going through a cycle uh, on the top side red LEDs it doesn't go all the way to the bottom LEDs and it doesn't uh, appear to be turning on the blue LEDs just the red ones so I'm not sure if this is a test pattern probably I must load some custom code I'm not sure let me just check the temperature of the components because I'm suspecting oh yeah this one is quite warm I'm pretty sure this transistor would need a heatsink it wouldn't be cool enough just with uh, free air circulating because this transistor is actually controlling the wireless power transmission through the coil and the whole circuit is drawing in excess of 500 milliamps that transistor will be dissipating quite a lot of heat so I'm going to end this kit assembly video by saying uh, it was a complete failure just assembling the kit took away all the fun it was so complicated to assemble I could really feel the, the lack of instructions and I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own I even managed to find the software online for displaying uh, for generating and displaying custom uh, patterns and I believe you can upload it through this uh, pin header right here. I believe the microcontroller has firmware loaded that accepts a custom string of commands through a serial port and through that you can load the custom display patterns and as I mentioned I managed to find the software that will generate those uh, custom patterns but it's all in Chinese and I wasn't able to do anything with the interface so I'm going to leave it like this basically I managed to get it assembled I think it is working but it lacks the software to really make something useful out of it I would not recommend buying this kit you'll probably be left in the same situation as I am I have a working hardware but no software to make it useful anyway thank you for watching this and see you next time